Hey guys, it's me, 80s from Rumble 4. So today, guys, we're talking to about Manchester City 7, RB Leipzig nil. And then we're also going to discuss about Inter Porto, guys. So, like I said, if you're new out here, consider that subscribe button, hit the like button as well, as we do our reaction to the Champions League games for today. So, I'm going to do this reaction, and then tomorrow we'll have the big, big stream. We'll go over all four games tomorrow. We'll also have you guys come on to a preview for the quarterfinals. You guys can come on and give your dream draw for your respected teams. And yeah, so let's go ahead and start with the first game, which we have is Man City 7, RB Leipzig nil. Guys, the game was already over, especially when it became 2-0. Erling Holland is a freak. This guy is on a man on a crazy mission. The amount of goals he is scoring for Manchester City has been ridiculous. He's scored five goals on the day. Five. That is like Champions League history. There is not many players that have been able to score that many goals in the same amount of game. Only a few players have done that. I believe Messi has done that, and maybe Ronaldo has done that. I I have to double check because I don't know actually, but um I know not many players have done five goals in a single game against RB Leipzig. It was incredible. It was incredible for Holland on the day, and you can see with this Manchester City team is that they just were amazing. Now, as for RB Leipzig, they were really poor on the day. Simply, simply poor. I mean, first goal was Enric's fault. You know, giving away that penalty. Yes, it was a harsh handball. Ultimately, the penalty was given. And up step Holland, he scores. Then the second goal, man. That was a terrible back pass. Terrible back pass. Intercepted by um, the City player. I forgot which City player intercepted it. And then, obviously, um, you know, Holland got some of the rebound. And it's 2-0. And then the third goal was a great uh, corner there. Um, uh, I believe Ruben Diaz got the initial shot. It was cleared off the line. Then Holland got the rebound. And then Ilkay Gundogan, the fourth goal, man. It was just ridiculous. Then Holland again, 5-0, 6-0 Holland. It was just ridiculous, man, for Manchester City. You know, and then KDB scored a worldly goal the last one. And you could see how Manchester City, you look at the players off the bench. You could bring Foden off the bench. You could bring Mars off the bench. And with this Leipzig team, man, I'm sorry. This was embarrassing performance. You know, like... This was demolition. Like, it was just not acceptable. And the thing is, like, this could have been double digits. Blaswich was incredible. He made so many saves on the day. This could have been double digits, man. And it should have. It should have. You know? And you can see how this Leipzig team, man, they really struggle without Nkunku. Nkunku is such a difference maker for this team. And like I said, guys, Leipzig defensively are just not very good. A lot of the goals they, uh, a lot of the goals they can see were terrible giveaways, terrible back passes, and even the first like two, like Schalger making that terrible back pass for Morris to score there. Vardiel wasn't great. You know, a lot of people are talking about him being the next center back. He was terrible in the day. Obviously, Willy Orban was not good. Henriks was not good. Wojn wasn't good. There wasn't really any good Leipzig players on the day. Even Timo Warner. Even Warner had a chance to score. You know, that chance, I believe, which minute was like at 35th minute, he, you know, could have done better there. And even Ederson as well. You could argue in some ways he got a little lucky to not get that red card when he went out of the pitch. Uh, but I believe he got the ball, so that's probably why he didn't get the red card. But regardless, man, for uh, Manchester City, man, is that they got the win. But I'm still not really convinced with this Manchester City team. Is that this team still doesn't really feel like... It still feels something is off. Like, it still doesn't feel like this team is in complete gel at the moment. And this team still looks like they're getting the job done. But they haven't really been convincing. Like, they haven't been playing that well. And I, I do worry for City in the sense that in the Champions League quarterfinals, if they, let's say, draw, like, a big team like Napoli, like, even if they draw, like, let's say, like, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. Because I'm going to say this right now. I don't think Manchester City will get an easy draw on Friday. I don't think they'll get an easy draw. Because, th like, I, I do think Manchester City is going to work and need to do a lot better than this. So, like I said, man, big, big win for Manchester City, man. Absolutely deserved win. They were amazing. The referee today was absolutely atrocious. I'm sorry, the referee was terrible. Uh, wasn't great whatsoever, but ultimately didn't really matter at the end. And City won 7 0, man. 7 0. Uh, incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. Okay, so now let's go ahead and discuss about the other game FC Porto 0, Inter 0. And I gotta say, man, Inter were magnificent defensively. They were magnificent. Because you have to give credit to Inter, man. They came on this, they came on the stadium with the mindset of, we want to advance. And you can see how FC Porto, as good as they were, they were not clinical enough. Which was my big concern heading into this tie, was that FC Porto would dominate for Inter at home. It's just that would FC Porto be clinical enough in front of goal? You know, I'm looking at players like Taremi was unclinical on the day. Rebe, you know, Grigage, you know, Taremi, Evan Nilsson. 
And you don't have to go right to Onana. Onana was amazing on the day. He made six saves on the day. You know, as for uh, Costa, Costa made five saves on the day. He was also pretty good for it. And it was a very much back and forth game. For like the first 30 or sh minutes or so, it was a very cagey game. But as the game wore on, you could see how much desperate Porto were. And I think Porto had that, ru they were rushing things through. And I think they, they just weren't able to keep their composure. You know, they were just rushing because there were so many good chances to score. Looking at the last minute there, Dumfries making that goal line clearance there, I believe. Um, you know, it was a huge, huge chance, you know. Uh, and you could see how, like I said, man, with this Porto team, man, is that it's it's such a big, big, um, they, they, they just simply weren't, um, they just simply weren't clinical enough. I mean, look at this, man, 21 shots, two big chances missed. As for Inter, they had some good chances too as well. I think Lotaro had a good chance there. Uh, Should have scored that chance, I believe. And then I believe uh, Lukaku as well, when he came on, had an impact. And yeah, for Inter, man, I think uh, DeMarco was great. Um, I thought Chalanaho did a good job defensively. Barella as well. a Cherby as well. And they even did it with some of their best players. Like Skriniar wasn't fully fit for this game. He had to come off the bench. You know, Stefan Devay had to come off the bench. Brozovic as well. Nambrosio. And yeah, I think for Inter, man, they were just defensively solid. And for Inter, and for Porta, man, like I said, they just weren't clinical enough, man. Just simply not clinical enough. Taremi in particular, wasting those opportunities. And yeah, for um, Porta, man, man of the magic out of Grujic. Um, he had a good game, center mid from Serbia, so he had a fantastic game there. And yeah, for uh, for Inter, man, um, how far they can go in the Champions League? Because at the beginning of the season, guys, I said Inter would make the semifinals. I even said this before the Champions League draw, you guys. If you guys don't believe me, you guys can check out my channel for proof. And I do believe Inter do have what it takes to get to the Champions League semis, which will be a pretty big statement, especially for Serie A, because... We are likely to have, assuming that Napoli do get their job done tomorrow, which I know they haven't, but you would imagine that we would have three Serie A clubs in the Champions League quarterfinals, and which will be a huge for Serie A because we haven't seen this amount of, we haven't seen this amount of Serie A clubs in the quarterfinals for some time now because usually it's Juventus that makes the quarters, and now we have both Milan clubs in the Champions League quarterfinals, which is amazing for Italian football. So as I said, for Inter, man, congratulations to them. They got the job done. They got the result that they wanted. As for Conte Salman. Very disappointment, of course. Pepe getting that sent off, the second yellow as well. Not very good for um, him on the day. And yet for Porto, man, they just weren't clinical enough, as I said, man. So for Inter, man, big, big result, man. Big, big result. So let's see what else is there to say here. So I'm looking at this right here. Some other big chance. Marcano saw his effort cleared the line by Dumfries. Uh, Taremi saw his point blank effort pushed onto the post by Onana before Grujic hits the bar. With the looping header and a Kadok um, end to the game, Pepe and Quina was thrown a second yellow card for a reckless tackle. With Porto going down to 10 men, the home side also had the better chance the first half. But Ruby's def deflected effort sailed wide, and Evan Nilsson's goal by shot from a tight angle is blocked by DeMarco. So, uh, as I said, man, it just shows how good Inter is defensively. It just shows how they are. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like I said, if you're new on here, consider hitting that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out, and I'll see you guys for tomorrow's stream.